Hello students, welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Dr. Bala Lakhendra from Banaras Hindu University. Today we are going to talk on the module Work and Wages. This module is designed to help you understand work divisions and wages of working women in media. After going through it, you would be able to describe different kinds of work that women working in media do, state different aspects of women's participation in media, find out the structure of wages for working women in media and define challenges and opportunities that come a working women's way in media. In the previous unit, we learnt about various aspects of women's places in culture besides getting an insight into women's representation in various forms of media. In this unit, we will explore the status of working women in media. As this is the first module of this unit, we will examine work and wages of working women. In the next module, we will discuss in detail women owners and editors engaged in India. In India, the 2001 census started that the number of working women was 127.04 million, but out of a total female population of 494.82 million. This included 72.65 million main workers and 54.39 million marginal workers among women professionals. On classifying women workers into rural and urban categories, it emerged that 60.33 million women were working as main workers in rural areas in comparison to 12.31 million in urban areas. Similarly, 51% one on million female marginal workers worked in rural areas and only 3.2% million in urban areas. Thus, there were as many as 367.78 million non-workers among women in the year 2001. In India, the comparative data for 1911 recorded 41.8 million female workers out of a total female population of 123.8 million. Thus, the percentage of women workers in the total workforce declined from 34.44% in 1911 to 2119 in 2001. Another alarming feature is that the work participation rate of women declined from 33.7 in 1911 to 14.68% in 2001. The work participation rate in 2001 is lower than the corresponding figure of 15.93 in 1991. In fact, this declining trend in the proportion of female workers has continued over the decades. Although 1980s witnessed an increase in employment of women, several social scientists pointed out that the ramifications of structural adjustment programs, that is SAP, hit the women workforce more gravely in some sectors. This is because a large percentage of women are in the organized sector, which is subjected to downsizing through voluntary retirement scheme. Nevertheless, the demand for women workers is on the increase everywhere in the world. They have been trying to accept the opportunities of employment and empower themselves with economic independence and prove their worth in societies. In this course of identifying themselves and equal contributors to the family's development, many a time they had to compromise on home front. They had to balance between their careers and family lives. However, a large percentage of working women still continue to pursue their conventional family arrangement by adjusting their working hours to their family responsibilities rather than the reverse as men do. The UNESCO studies indicate that throughout the world, much more is known about image of women than about women's participation in media industries. In general, employment data on women and media around the world are incomplete and unreliable. Despite these observations, UNESCO study, which was conducted in 1989, shows that around the world, the proportion of female journalism students 
greatly exceeds that of working women in journalism. This piece of statistics likely forecasts a growing number of women in journalism professions globally, though these women continue to face many discouraging obstacles. Further, in some ways, women may be making more progress in some third world media, but studies in Japan, the United States, Colombia, Jamaica and Sri Lanka indicate that women have a more prominent role as reporters and anchors. It did observe a bias against women as foreign correspondent in all five countries as well as an apparent universal tendency to assign women to cover only domestic issues. One research study by Seeger and Olson in 1986 was able to report simple data on proportions of women in the media workforce from 46 countries and on both print and broadcast media from 25 countries. Their data indicate that women made up for more than 30% of the total media workforce in Costa Rica, Chile, Taiwan, Venezuela 35% and in Cuba, Thailand, the United States 40%. Women made up for 5% or less of media workforce in Bangladesh that was recorded as 1%. Peru and Japan only 2% and Haiti and Honduras 5%. Countries that reported only broadcast media data reported 30% or more women in workforce. For instance, while Sweden was having 30%, Singapore recorded 38% and Jamaica 50%, decent percent of women workforce. Countries like Austria, Ghana or Norway, they were having less than 5% workforce. Even we saw the Australia was having 0%. Just as China is fast emerging as the superpower in many fields, the statistics in media is also progressive in China. Women now account for 41% of total media workforce in China. According to Margaret Golager, a well-known researcher, women are not a significant part of media workforce. In Asia, women from 21% of the total media workforce. In South Africa, the percentage is 27. In Western Europe and United States, the number goes up to 35%. Worldwide, women form 79% of all part-time workers in the news media. In Japan, women are only 8% of media employees. In India, and Malawi, they are only 12%. And in Argentina, Mozambique, women are 16% of media workforce. In Africa, women are 8% of broadcasting managers and 14% managers in print media. In Latin America, the figures are 21% for broadcasting and 16% for print. However, studies have found out that throughout the world, women were virtually absent from top executive positions and at the lower level, women were segregated into lower paying clerical occupations. The few new positions typically handled are more of traditional in nature of less significance. Other problems discussed by Gallagher include job conditions assuming male roles, that is the expectations of high performance in youth with no consideration for childbearing or child care. Women's poor record of active union membership, protective legislation of media women, that is laws in some countries restricting overtime and night work for women, and inadequate training and education for women in media. In broadcasting media, Gallagher notes women minuscule presence women's absence from technical jobs and senior management and women's segregation into certain program making areas such as educational and children's programs. Soon after independence, it was found that most of the media organizations were owned by Indian businessmen and the majority of the employees were Indians. In India, the newspapers were in the private sector and radio and television were owned by the government. 
Moreover, the newspapers used to imply only men on the ground that the men could be deputed to different kinds of work and could also be posted for the night shift. Thus, women were not employed till 1960s. The typical experience of a women journalist is reflected in a statement of Usha Rai, a noted journalist in the country. Usha Rai writes, When I joined the Times of India, Delhi in 1964, there was not a single woman on the editorial section of the newspaper. There was no woman in the reporting unit, on the desk or the edit page. The only women in the newspaper were receptionists and telephone operators. There was no toilet for women on the editorial floor and I had to get to the telephone operators to borrow the key to use their toilet on the ground floor. Many a time the patriarchal nature of men journalists translates into discrimination and harassment, stereotyped attitudes, sexual harassment, salad references, unfair treatment in assignment and promotions, traditional gender bias and lack of support mechanism for working women deter them from joining the media or decision making positions. Usharai says, majority of women journalists are forced to continue to desk which is claimed to be safe and secure resulting in more number of sub-editors. The Press Institute of India report of 2004 says that though an increasing number of women are entering the reporting field, the nature of the reporting they do is definitely not encouraging. The gender discrimination is evident in the way beats and coverage of stories is assigned. Women still are limited to assignment of soft issues such as fashions, culture, arts and lifestyle which men are assigned political and economic stories which are considered hard news. In India, Ravin Jaffrey estimated that there were 4,700 journalists in early 1960s. By the year 1990, India had about 25,000 journalists on visits or retainers, which came up to one journalist for every 35,000 people. This excluded thousands of stringers and contributors. However, very few studies have been conducted to examine the sociological issues involved in the career of journalists in India. The first available empirical study on journalism education in India was the first press commission report. According to the survey conducted for the commission in 1950, 201 out of a total 542 journalists, 30 percent have no university degree. 29 that makes 40 percent were graduates and out of that 120, almost 22 percent had a postgraduate degree. With respect to pre-entry or in service training, 460 out of 542 journalists had no such training. Out of 82 journalists who received training, 25 were trained by newspapers themselves. 27 had taken a diploma in journalism and 8 of them had a degree. The rest had gone through short course in India or abroad. In India, the journalists were mostly from middle or upper class with urban background. According to the second press commission that was held in 1984, Indian journalists, particularly women, came from middle or upper class families and were from urban background. It was also found that there were dissatisfaction in the professional areas of use of abilities and training, opportunity for originality and initiative and getting ahead in professional career. Malayalam journalists were professionally ahead of journalists from Bihar, Bombay and Madras. In a study of growth of online newspapers a decade ago, it was found that majority of the online journalists were in the age group of 21 to 30 and most of the female respondents were between 31 to 31 years age. Further, the study observed that in internet newspaper, 7.6 of respondents had journalist education as against 72.3% journalists were having journalism education. More female respondents had journalism education than their male counterparts. With respect to the working conditions of online journalists, 
the study concluded that there is awareness on the part of online journalists about the limitations of online journalism and they are being attracted towards the new media for better salaries and glamour. In a comprehensive study across the country, Bala Subramanyam, the study conducted uh, was in 2005, studied 835 journalists spread across 40 different states and working in newspapers and magazines of 11 languages. Only 20% of them were women journalists and among them 38% in the age group of 20 to 30 years. 35% in 31 to 40 years of age group and 17% were of 41 to 50 years age group. Only 6.7% women were of age group 51 to 60. 1.6% of women were of age group 61 to 70 years of age. A significant majority of 75% was between 20 to 40 years. Regarding the marital status, 69% were married, where 29% were unmarried and 1% working women were divorced and 0.25% were widowed. Out of the total of 835, 41% were postgraduates, 34% were graduate and 7.4% were journalism graduates. 18.2% postgraduates in journalism and 9.3% have diploma or certificate course in journalism. Interestingly, the study noted that half of the journalists had freedom in selection of a story while 2.5% did not have freedom to select a story. With women starting to have prolonged career in media, one reaches the position of formulating policies of the newspaper or at least close to the policy maker. By virtue of their position, they get more freedom in their day-to-day -day operations. The study had also noted that formal education in journalism is not compulsory to get into profession. This is one of the reasons why journalism has not achieved the status of profession. Whereas the dynamic angle of journalism education has been that more number of journalists have postgraduate qualifications in journalism than the graduate degree in journalism, which could be due to fact that post-graduation in journalism is opened for all students from various disciplines without prior degree in journalism. According to this study, majority of them have noble cause to join profession like contributing something significant to the society. The chance to help people was found as one important aspect of journalism and 53% of the respondents subscribed to this view. A national workshop on women journalism held in New Delhi in January 2002 also expressed that though the number of women in media increased their working conditions, especially in the small towns and in the regional languages press have actually deteriorated. The workshop demand for protection of all employment rights and benefits of women journalists and to implement Supreme Court directives on sexual harassment by media organizations. At the same time, women who are confident, hardworking, willing to take up the challenges reach top positions despite several hurdles in profession. They have moved from coverage of soft news like fashions, art, beauty contests to hard news such as politics, sports and war reporting. Although the proportion of women students in journalism education had increased, the number of students getting into media is not encouraging. The Committee on the Status of Women in India Journalists highlighted the low status of women in various spheres of women development, which was reported by Press Institute of India in 2004. The Press Institute of India report, which came in 2004, revealed that over two-thirds of women journalists were below 35 years. The study found that many women journalists work as daily wage labor without an appointment later, signing a master role at the end of the month to get Rs 1,500 to 3,000 only. 
Most women start working without appointment letters and are hired and fired on the whims of the management. Job insecurity was the highest in the regional language press because journalists are hired as daily wage earners. The study reported that major concern were the contract system, the dilemma of childcare in conflict with profession, maternity leave and benefits and lack of transparency. The study reported that 3% of respondents felt that being a mother was a disqualification for promotions. It also examined gender-based problems. About 23% of respondents experienced sexual harassment and another 5% was not sure about what constituted sexual harassment. In northeastern part of the country, 40% of the respondents have never been promoted. About 10 years back, only 35 women worked as print journalists in the seven states in the conflict-ridden northeastern part of the country. The figure has not much improved even today. As the work of a media woman is rigorous and round the clock, many journalists work in shift duties which vary in timing. In context of globalization, women are coming forward to work in the media even after late hours. However, when media women work in night shift, getting a transport from the office to the home is increasingly becoming a problem. In mass communication channels, media personnel are expected to meet the deadlines. Hence, they have to work for the purpose. In the process of completing the task at hand, the media personnel are subjected to pressure of work because unforeseen circumstances arise in the last leg of the work. Specifically, for the working journalists, the Working Journalist Working Condition Act 1995 stipulates 6 hours of work in the day hour and 5.5 hours in the night hours. Contrary to the Act, the working journalists work beyond the hours. One reason is that the shortage of staff in the office for the extra work and another reason is that publishing special supplements for special occasions. In a study, respondents cited the following reasons for extra work. If we talk about the wage boards, there is a question, do media organizations implement wage board? The central government sets up wage boards for newspaper journalists to review wage structures. However, television channels do not come under the ambit of wage boards and the respective managements of television network implement the wages regardless of the government wage boards. The big newspapers as a mandatory principal policy implement wage boards. But small newspapers don't implement wage boards. Normally, wage boards constituted by the central government periodically review the wage structure for journalists working in newspapers and ask the media management to implement them. Workplace environment is one of the reasons for comfortable working and various studies done in different settings have provided ample evidence to the fact that job satisfaction is also linked to workplace environment. For instance, some studies explored the experiences of women journalists working in sports, focusing on four areas of potential problems, and these are condensation in the workplace, equal opportunity in the workplace, perceived performance, and job satisfaction. The results also indicate that females have begun to appear in sports newsrooms across United States of America and India in increasing numbers. Still women feel they are in many ways invisible to their colleagues, expected to know less and accept more menial assignments while being the target of sexiest language. In another study, it was found that for newsroom managers, organizational change was a losing proposition, resulting in staff members' perception of great unhappiness with their jobs. Newsroom employees were most negative about changes they thought hindered their ability to provide high-quality journalists, and change management efforts had only limited impact on job satisfaction and commitment. The study examined short- and long-term effects of 1998 series of change in the CNN headline news organization. 
the changes involve personal technology work schedule work processes and news formats the study examined how newsroom employees responded to the specific changes and their overall effects on job satisfaction attitude towards management and commitment to the job studies examining specific types of changes primarily technological on newsroom employees have found that new technologies can change job roles require new skills increase time spent on technology use and decrease time available to develop content so students let us now summarize what we have learnt in this module the number of working women has increased steadily over the years across the world the credit for this gradual increase in women workforce goes to a growing desire to be economically independent among women according to a unesco report much more is known about images of women and women's participation in media however from whatever data are available it can be deduced that the percentage of women working in media has increased over the years though overall in asia women form 21% of media workforce the percentage drops to a moderate 12 in india in a patriarchal country like india women had hardly a significant presence in the early days of media however the number of female journalists reached about 25000 only by 1990 despite this increase the condition of working women in media remained abysmal in small cities and regional language papers often women are hired and fired at the whims of the management they have to face several problems at workplace female journalists often work in shift duties the workload that they face is too rigorous as there is always a shortage of staff in media houses big newspapers follow wage boards and pay female journalists well but in a smaller newspapers they are paid very poorly thank you